Hello, this is Amjad Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq. Today we are going to do a case of uh, osseal left main stem intermediate lesion in a patient with uh, angina. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Amjad, consultant cardiologist. We'll do the case with Dr. Ali Al Naimi, who is third year final cardiology board. Dr. Ali will present the case. Assalamu alaikum. Our case today a 55 years old female with history of diabetic, hypertensive, hypothyroidism on thyroxine, and the patient, heavy smoker. Patient presented with a recurrent chest pain, ischemic chest pain in the last two months, and uh, history of CCO admission due to severe chest pain in the last month when uh, cut down at that time, which show osteal intermediate left main stem, and the patient referred to us for evaluation. So the patient with angina and left main intermediate lesion was refer uh, has cut down by radial approach at another hospital uh, and was referred uh, for us for evaluation of the left main stem. Uh, and if we can uh, see the diagnostic angiography, uh, uh, as you see, uh, the catheter, uh, there is some backflash, but there is seem to be stenosis at the osseum of the left main stem. The report, they reported that there was significant dampening of pressure upon engagement of the left main stem. This is a spider review. The operator always tried to engage and disengage to avoid dampening of a pressure. And this is the cranial review. There seems to be some lesion in the left main stem. Uh, they actually reported giving nitroglycerin without much improvement. So let's go back to the, the AP codal view. As you see, the lesion in the osseal left main stem. And in the cranial view, there, there might be some myocardial bridge at the mid part of the LID. Uh, the other thing is the RCA also has some osseal lesion, and they also reported dampening of a pressure without relief by nitroglycerin. And there is some ectasia. So our plan is going to do FFR for the left main stem and probably FFR for the RCA2. And if it is significant, then we go for IVAS guided PCI for the left main stem. Okay, Dr. Ali, you agree oh, with this? Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, we started the case. Me, Dr. Amjad Al Mindilawi, with Dr. Ali Naimi, third year cardiologist, and the nurse assistant, Ahmed Mohammed. Uh, the radiographer uh, Ismail and uh, Zulfiqar, the technician. Uh, so uh, the guiding cath is JL73.5, is up in the aorta, uh, and we'll see if we get down pressure or not, okay? So the pressure now is okay. Uh, let me fill the catheter, wait. Okay. Now we are on pressure again. Yeah, you see the damp pressure is ventricularized and it's done. So what we are going to do, to do, pull back the catheter, pull back, pull back. Okay, enough, that's enough. The pressure is going back again. Uh, so we are going to use a wire in the aorta to avoid uh, complete uh, engagement. Okay, go. a floating wire in the aorta to avoid deep engagement into the left uh, main stem. Yeah, push it out, okay. Go now. Okay. Push the wire, the wire more, push the wire. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, that's it, that's good. That's good position. Uh, Kabur. Frontal? Yeah, frontal. Okay. Fluoro. Okay, and you? Let's go cranial. Okay. Okay. So a non-selective engagement, the left main look a little bit better than what we have seen in the diagnostic angiography. Uh, maybe there was some spasm, 
but uh, you notice that we had the dampening of pressure. So still uh, FFR is indicated in this case. Let's take our iocodal. Okay, Andrew. Okay, give me another BM wire. Now we try to engage the left main LED and uh, do the FFR. We are using an ordinary workhorse wire, a BMW wire, uh, for this system of FFR. Go. You don't need the pressure wire. And this is the beauty of this system, uh, that whatever wire you use, you can use it. Uh, and uh, you don't need to disengage and engage when you do uh, give intravenous uh, adenosine. Take frontal cuddle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for the LED. No, no. Okay. No. Right, Okay. okay. Uh, so this is the micro catheter, true physio. Uh, we flush it first while it's inside the, the port. After that, uh, we connect the cable to the console. Uh, we connect the aortic uh, pressure to the console also, and then we zero both. Okay. So we take out the, the microcatheter. The back clip killed. That's how it is. And and thread it over the BMW wire. It's a monorail microcatheter, as we said in previous uh, video. It has uh, the transducer uh, at the tip. Okay. Go. Uh, start again. Uh, let's. Uh, we we make sure. Wait. We make sure that uh, we are flushing the catheter. We take out all the dye from the catheter. Uh, then we push the microcatheter into the aorta. Push, push. More. We're <laughs> dealing fusion. Uh, okay, t uh, push the microcatheter. Once it's outside the guiding cath, we can pull back the guiding cath a little bit. Okay, push the microcatheter. Okay, we, we have two dots outside the guiding cath. Now we equalize the pressures. The fiqar equalize. Yeah, we have to make sure that both waveform conform to each other and the equalization is one uh, aorta and the PA distal. Now we push the microcatheter beyond the lesion of interest. Let's go to middle ID. Okay. So it's around 98. And now we are started, we are going to start intravenous adenosine infusion. حجية بس ما احتمال شوية تحسين أكو ضيق نفس بسيط. Okay, start adenosine. Yes. ده يمشي. Yes. At infusion rate of 140 mic per kg per minute. Having an FFR of more than 95, I think it would be a non-significant lesion here. 
so now it's coming down to 94, 93, 92, okay, it's 88. Still, it's uh, in the non-significant zone. Did you get me, share? Okay. Seven no. Eight no. Uh, okay. Show me the floral. Floral. If we go more distal in the LED. Still 86, 87. Stop floral. So we may wait for uh, four minutes and then do a pullback. Uh, record the, the FFR, yes. It's uh, still 89. Floro. More distal in the LED is around 86, still 88. Don't move the catheter. Uh, there is some uh, my small myocardial bridge that caused this undulation in the, you see, uh, in the waveform. Some kink and some contractility causes some undulation in the waveform. You see this one? It, it impinges on the wall, so you get such undulation in the waveform of the distal, not of the awarta. So I'm going to pull back and do some pull back. Do it a gradual. 17 mil. Let me push back again. Push uh, forward. I think we are going to pull back and finish uh, the FFR here. Ninety-two. Yeah, ninety-two. Back to the aorta to avoid the drift. Let's see if there is any drift. So there is no drift. It is one. Uh, don't don't move. Uh, it's moving by the catheter. Uh, let's see. Stop infusion. Yes, stop. No, no, no. Wait. Let's see the drift. So it's 96. Maybe we are inside the coronary. Let's pull back. It's one. But uh, touching the wall of the aorta, causing this. Uh, Now it's one, we are outside the coronary and there is no drift, 1.02, 1.03, all considered okay. So we stop the infusion and uh, by this FFR, it is non-significant. Uh, so the down pressure happened on the RCA and uh, we couldn't pull back the catheter. So again, we'll try to take some uh, floating wire, pull, uh, push the wire, push the wire. Uh, keep it in the water. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can. Yeah, that's it. That's good. That's good. Uh, just pull back the wire a little bit. Okay. Cover. We'll go non-selective. We'll go non-selective. And you? Yeah. You see? Uh huh. Pressure. The pressure now is okay. Give me fluoro. So most probably that was spasm. You see now we don't. Uh, we are good. Uh, let's take take the. FFR wire. So we give uh, nitroglycerine and uh, let's see. Okay, don't engage, don't engage. And you? Ah, the same. There is some lesion even after nitroglycerine. Uh, so go uh, by another wire into the RCA. Okay. And uh, 
No, we don't need that. And uh, we need the, to go by FFR. Okay. Go. Uh, no, this is a branch, huh? Let me give you it some day. It's okay. Good. No, okay. Okay, take out. Uh, again, uh, we'll clear the system from the die. Just make sure that you are not engaged. Yeah, it's okay. Take out the die. Do some flush. The pressure is okay. Okay. Uh, give me the micro -tethetal. Which one? Which wire is it? Just for the completion of the work, otherwise the RCA looks non-critical. Although we had done thinning of pressure, this was not mentioned in the diagnostic angiography. Okay, go, 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 more. You have the marker here. Okay, uh, now we have to equalize, uh, push the microcatheter. Now we have to push, uh, pull the guiding cath more. When you pull, you may get some, wait, yeah. Okay. Disengaged. Yeah, now it is disengaged. Uh, push the microcatheter. Yeah, good. That's it, that's it. Now we equalize. Now push it, uh, wait, uh, wait a few seconds. It is equal, one. Now push the microcatheter to the mid part of the RCA. Very good, yeah. Okay, stop here. Uh, so again, the ratio distal to proximal 0.99. Okay, we start the denosine infusion, no problem. Uh, yeah. From the beginning, it seems that it's not a critical. I'm sure I have seen the nafas. Of course, we have to tell the patient about the effect of adenosine. He's okay. Yeah. Now it's 95. You have to make sure that your microcatheter is beyond the lesion. Stop the fluoro. So it's 95 after intravenous adenosine infusion. Keep it like that. No, don't touch it. Still the FFR 94, will complete all the adenosine infusion. Yes. Pull, pull, pull. Let's see to make sure that there is no drift. Yeah, very good. Okay, wait, just wait here. No, no, no. You don't have to do that. We are okay. Okay, 99. Don't pull it back. So the ratio is one. Again, this is non-significant, and I think we can uh, safely uh, complete the procedure, and uh, there is no any significant lesion. So we can say safely that the lesion in the left main stem and the lesion in the RCA that they are both non-significant. Uh, the patient can continue on medical treatment uh, and thank you.